Excuse me, uh, hi, um, I was just on your Orient Express, it's the MP27 reviewer. Um, I was on your Orient Express and I couldn't help but notice that, um, people were dying and, um, there were, like, old school movie monsters. I don't know if you guys are running a theme, but death and monsters don't go good together. Enough is enough. Okay, just put it, I'm gonna put it bluntly to you. I have had it with these mother <laughs> mummies on this <laughs> train. I see. Well, I don't care if you're trying to branch out and give jobs to the monsters, but um, I just would like simple, better catering service. Be more polite next time. Seriously. This is getting ridiculous. No respect anymore. <sighs> Hello guys, gals, and everything in between. It's me, the MP27 reviewer, as you know. Uh, we got ourselves another Who today. Get our fix of Who. Um, and boy, these episodes just keep getting better and better and better. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's been an incline. We're in for some awesome stuff in the near future, I can tell. Right now we have the uh, Mummy on the Orient Express. The Mummy on the Orient Express is basically a story where the Doctor and Clara, they've made up now, uh, they are going to this train in the future, but it looks like a train in the past. You're getting that sci-fi mixed with historical stuff. And there's a mummy on board, so you get that classic 1950s universal movie monster feel. And all of that just mixes awesomely. Guys, this is probably my favorite episode so far of the season now. I know I said that last week, but this week, it really, they're hitting it hard with some of the heavy hitters. I practically forgot the Robin Hood episode. This is just, it hits hard. It hits with the drama and all of that. At first, it's a little jarring, though, because randomly, Clara's just there, and she's looking so hot. Moment of silence for Clara being so hot in this episode. May the TARDIS be with you, Clara. They're just like happy-go-lucky, and then about a scene and a half in, she's like, well, you know, I'm still mad at you, and you're like, oh, so apparently you've decided to make up with him, okay? As, as our heroes go on, of course, we know that there is something wrong, and it is the mummy, and essentially you have 66 seconds to live by the time this mummy sees you, and the person who is going to die is the only person who can see the mummy. So you have this really crazy intense sort of atmosphere that this person sees the mummy, and it's like they're counting down. It's like, what do you see? And it's so frantic. But then all of a sudden we're getting these really frantic, intense moments of just action movie level stuff, but not really in action, just more in the tension. This has like Hitchcockian style tension. This is as if Alfred Hitchcock was brought back to life and said, I'm gonna direct an episode of Doctor Who. This is the episode he would have made. Is that awesome? Yes it is, because the writing is solid, the directing is super solid in this episode, the just tension, um, they they give you this level of intrigue where there's always like a mystery box that you're opening. So all of a sudden you're like, oh, whoa, I didn't expect this. Oh, whoa, I didn't expect that. And it just goes on and on and on. And I, I loved that dynamic because you always felt like there was something new around the corner. And there was. And that is props to the storytellers. The thing that really I loved that may tie into the rest of the series is he mentions this Hal guy keeps sending him invites and invites and he managed to call the TARDIS and he said, Clara, you know how hard that is. I think he skipped over it, but I think that whoever was on that train conducting it has to do with the calling the TARDIS and Missy and all of that. I think that that's actually our big connection. I think that there was someone very important to the key to the identity of Missy and the Nether Sphere and Paradise 
all of it right there, and it was just that little Easter egg, and I loved the Easter egg. One thing that I thought was great with Doctor Who is they brought back the tension of the Doctor with dialogue, because ultimately the mummy is defeated by dialogue. And, you know, the Doctor's been running around frantically, plugging things in, all of that kind of stuff. I love that. But the Doctor is known for being able to talk to an enemy. I mean, ten talk to the devil in one. So, I'm just saying, they haven't done that in a while. And then, all of a sudden, the Doctor is is talking to the mummy, and he's frantic because he knows he only has so much time left. And when he talks to the mummy, he wins. And you're just sitting there, and you're just nail-biting intensity. And then finally it happens, and you're just like, Is that you see Clara ultimately still not trusting the doctor, saying, you know, this, this isn't what you said. Wow, you just made me do this. You know, that whole thing. And then all of a sudden you see the doctor almost realize that he's losing her. And then he... That's how he ultimately gets the mummy to attack him. And I love that you see that he's willing to make these sacrifices for her, and she may not realize it yet. This episode really was Clara's redemption. She was ultimately trying to figure out what happens to her fate with the Doctor. And then, obviously, she decides, I'm going to keep traveling with you. And... I like that because I love Clara. She's such a great companion. Danny Pink is okay with her traveling with the Doctor. And it just sort of has that relationship dynamic where it's like the old friend versus the significant other. And it really has that sort of push and pull. And it gives the Doctor a lot of mature elements. And I think that that's nice because the show needs that. And I think that this episode was one of the most mature and well-written episodes I've seen this season. And I'd even argue last season, too. I mean, this, this episode is top-notch. Mummy on the Orient Express is amazing. So, my big theory for this episode, obviously, was this guy, um, I forgot what they named him. Uh, Gus, I want to say. Um, but he... Wow, like the the whole idea to me that that we were that close to whoever is this sort of ringmaster was on this train kind of thing. It just it almost shows that they're that they're plucking themselves through the doctor's life, and that's cool to me. And when I saw the mummy and possible AI and all that, I was like, it's the paradise, man. It's it's happening, and we're getting so much closer to it, and I think that this really was a connection. I think it will have a more important role than they're playing it down to be, because this is one of those episodes, I feel like, once you finish the season, you're going to go back and go, oh my god, how did I not see that? So what do you think? I personally think that this was the best episode of the season so far. Um, do you guys think so? What are some of your theories, of course? Comment below. Let's keep the discussions coming. Uh, and, of course, as always, Alonzi.